Nana Chancellor Utunfo said to do the second as Antihne. Deputy Minister for Education, Reverend Tim Fojo. Chairman and members of council. Vice Chancellor and Vice Chancellors from sister universities. Our Pro Vice and Vice Chancellors. Former Vice Chancellors and Pro Vice Chancellors present. Registrar and former registrars present. Chief Director of the Ministry of Education. Members of Parliament present. MMDC is present. Provost of Colleges, Members of Convocation, Senior and Junior Staff, Nananum, Alumni of the University, Invited Guests, Members of the Press, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's an, indeed an honor to be here at KNUSD. What the Vice Chancellor feel, uh, failed to do was to take credit for the fact that I too am an alumnus of KNUSD. Maybe he didn't want to take For them to think that will give them undue advantage. But now the Danko Akufado has given KNUSD a gift. So when you talk about projects that are coming here, it's not by accident. I was a student of Republic Hall. Yes. The best hall at KNUSD. <laughs> we were called the gentlemen. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I have fond memories of KNUSD. Great memories of this institution. My years here when I was appointed Assistant Secretary of SRC helped, guided me during the time of Professor Kwame, during the time of staff rationalization, had a wonderful opportunity to serve on the University Rationalization Committee, learned so much. Those the days of uh, uh, registrar, I heard registrar Kwachisam, I think she was a deputy registrar then. Um, KNUST is always in my heart. I travel the world. <laughs> Spent 26 years abroad, U.S., and you meet Ghanaians, and I went to KNUST, and they are in charge of sewage treatment of the city of Los Angeles. Go to every city, every community in the U.S., and you see a graduate from U.S.T. there. So when you talk about global impact, you have truly impacted the world. KNUST, KNUST's leadership in the world is second to none. You have done so well. And I think it's in order for you to celebrate your 70 and begin to look at what is ahead of us. And I say as because I'm part of the, of the group. What is ahead of this institution, I believe is better than what it has already accomplished. Your great days are ahead of you and the government will support you to get to your intended destination. I know my speech writers are dreading that I won't read from the script. <laughs> the deputy minister handed me the script and said, try as much as possible to read from it. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I'll try as much as possible to read certain portions of it and then I'll speak from my heart. <laughs> so let me, first of all, seize this golden opportunity, Nana Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, to congratulate the new governing council and pray for God's wisdom and insight as they carry out their mandate. 
On the university's 70th anniversary, I congratulate the management, staff, and students of the prestigious Institution of Higher Learning and Research. Your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, with great sense of determination and vision, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has steadily evolved over the last 70 years and metamorphosed into a giant center of excellence in Africa. And I'll say, in the world. There are very few universities around the world like KNUST, so don't let us just limit ourselves to Africa. Your campus compares favorably and probably better than most universities in the United States of America. The research that you are doing is comparable to that of other universities in the world. So let's box, take ourselves out of the African box and begin to look at the fact that we can compete just like anybody else anywhere in the world. <laughs> so this is how I get off the script. <laughs> For the past 70 years, KNUST has excelled in its core mandate. With deep sense of pride, the university has distinguished herself in the fields of engineering, science, agriculture, and healthcare, having produced some of the most talented graduates for both industry and academia. KUST is a source of national pride that reaches beyond the borders of Ghana to the extent that the university has produced some highly skilled workforce for Africa and for the rest of the world. We commend you for the role you have played in absorbing graduates from the Free Senior High School. You see, free senior high school is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. One of the most critical metrics that ensures or that measures how your country is transforming its fortunes is when you look at your gross tertiary enrollment ratio. When you begin to see your gross tertiary enrollment ratio trending upwards, then you can see that your, uh, your transformation is coming. KNUS's ability to absorb more students is contributing to the growth of our gross tertiary enrollment ratio. And I, I, I always, as a mathematics teacher, I want to break it down so everybody will understand. By the time I leave here, you know what is going on. And you achieve. How many of you? between the ages of 18 to 20, 20. And you follow up and say, how many people in all are in some kind of tertiary institutions? If Nana says I have only 10, this is 10 out of 100, the gross tertiary enrollment ratio of Bangkok will be If you were to go to another town and they have 20% gross tertiary enrollment ratio, their transformation will be faster than that of Bangkok. So when you look at the gross tertiary enrollment ratio, you are simply looking at, do we have the critical minds of them? Transformation as a community and as a nation. Ghana's gross tertiary enrollment ratio is 18.8%. South Korea is 93.6%. Mauritius is 40%. And whenever you see yourself moving forward and up transformation is coming, it is therefore not surprising when Anadu Danko Kufuado, in his last State of the Nation address, indicated that he wants to see Ghana's gross tertiary enrollment ratio move up to 40% by 2030. But how do you do that when you don't have free secondary education that ensures that you have the pool to select into the tertiary? So when we talk about free senior high school, we are talking about how do you create a pipeline that would then feed into the tertiary. And not just in the area of access, not just the numbers, but you have to also look at the quality of the graduates. And not only should you look at the quality of the graduates, but you should look at the relevance of the courses that you are offering. We as a nation have to pre be prepared for the fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution around the world was in the area of water, steam engines came. Then electricity came, 
which led to mass production of goods, making it cheaper so that common people can afford. Then from electricity, we move on to electronics and information technology. The gadgets that we love so much, your iPhone, your iPad, and all the tools that you love so much, which makes life easy, life easy for you. But now we are moving into the fourth industrial revolution. In this industrial revolution, we are blurring the lines of physical and biological. That is why you can use your eyes when the right programming is done to enter your house. The biometric eyes will enable your house to open for you and nobody else. The world is changing so fast. How do we prepare for that? If we are not talking about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we are not going to be part of the fourth industrial revolution. Steam, steam engine passes by. The second industrial revolution passed Africa by. The third we are grappling, and the fourth now is here. This is the only opportunity we have to put poverty at bay and to ensure that together we can transform our nation. And that is why the president has directed that the ministry emphasize science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Next academic year, we are opening about 10 schools that is focused on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We want them to capture the content that will be taught in the first year of engineering programs in such a way that by the time they get here, they are taking advanced classes and you are moving them on. We want to make sure that pipeline is there because if the pipeline is not there, your work becomes difficult. We don't want students to come to the university for the first time to hear about aviation now. They should do it in junior high school and they should do it in high school. And that is not going to be possible if we do not change our junior high school system. It is the weakest link in our education system. Before 1987, we have seven years of secondary education. Those of you who are privileged to go to Opokwari and Prempe, you have seven years if you did your sixth form there. Seven years of secondary education, seven years you went to the lab, you were taught by graduate teachers. During that seven years, you had a library to, uh, to go to. Then came 1987 education reform, and I don't know what happened to our country, we decided that would jettison that. And we created junior high school, senior high school. In other countries that have created that system, they made sure that their junior high school, even though may not be on the campus of the senior high, have the same facilities as the senior high school. But Ghana did not do that. We shipped the junior high school into the old middle school buildings where there were no libraries, no science lab, no computer lab, and we're still with the stroke of a pen said, you are a junior high school, you are secondary, but you don't have anything secondary in your facility. And that is why if we do not look at the transformation of a junior high school into a full-fledged lower secondary education regime, it's going to be difficult for the university to turn out the graduates that they want. Because by the time they get to you, they are not adequately prepared to do the programs that you offer. Now, now the Dan Kukufuado has directed that some of these lower secondary institutions be constructed and built in such a way that when students walk in, first day of school, they are walking into a chemistry lab, they are walking into a biology lab, they are going to a, um, a physics lab in junior high school, or what we call lower secondary. And then they are also going to begin to do aviation sciences, aeronautical sciences, just like other schools and junior high schools around the world. If we want to be like Singapore, we have to do what Singaporeans do. So we cannot continue to say that we know education is important to transform the fortunes of this country, but we're not going to do education the way it is done around the world. The gaps in our education system is being bridged. Why should we allow students who cannot read and write at junior high school to still write exams in nine subjects? Why can't we take one of the courses and say, because Kwejo, you can't read and you can't write, you're going to do additional English? This is a common sense approach to education reform, and it's going to happen live in Ghana. <laughs> if a student gets to high school and can't write and can't read proficiently, 
why should we ask the students to, in addition to the core four subjects, do six other subjects when we know that that student can't write? Why can't we give that student additional English class to learn how to read and write? If the students come to the university and through no fault of your own, they are not proficient in writing, the university should not pass them on. The university should ensure that they have writing courses. And if it means it's going to take that student four and a half years to graduate from you, so be it. They'll go out there fully equipped for the 21st century. Council members to, should take interest in the academic work at the universities. I know there are so much on your place, promotion issues and salary issues, but take interest in the academic of, of the university. Some time ago, a professor made a comment that the high schools are not training the students well, and therefore, when they come to the universities, they don't do well. And he said, garbage in, garbage out. I happened not to be at that meeting, but when I heard it, my response was that universities should look at themselves as recycling plants. When garbage comes in, it has to come out as a recycled product. <laughs> and when you can't do that, you lose your metal as an institution of learning. When we begin to worry about the graduates and employment, we have to also look at who is coming up. A graduate of a university is not KUSD. Walk into my office looking for a job, and what I do with them is I ask them to write something for me to see if there's an opportunity if I could help them. Gave her a piece of paper, and he wrote a half a page, no comma, nothing, one sentence. <laughs> graduate of a university whose name I will not mention. But that is a graduate, and do you think industry people are going to hide them? And that is why we have to begin to take a look at what we do here. Council members, take a serious look at what is done in the various classrooms to begin to look at how do we create that graduate, that industry will come after. But that is not going to happen if we turn industry to be in their own little corner. When I was a deputy minister, I remember having a meeting with the cocoa industry players, people who have requested for a meeting with us. We went to the meeting. And one of my staff had the audacity in his opening remarks, which I don't even know where it came from, to tell the industry that uh, we are the Ministry of Education. We appreciate the fact that you are coming to meet with us, but when you come to the ministry, you don't tell us what to do. And I said, are you serious? So I interjected and I said, I apologize to them. If they don't tell you what to do, you can do whatever you want to do, but when your graduates come out of the university, they won't find a place to work. Industry should be telling us what to do every single day so that the graduates will be fit for their consumption and employment. I'm not looking through my notes. <laughs> Staff recruitment. Vice Chancellor, Madam Vice Chancellor, I heard you clear. And uh, we are going to make an effort to ensure that we can help to provide more clearances. But I know the government has done very well the last two years, which you commended the government for. But we are going to do more. There's a story of a young man. I'm looking at a new partnership with KNUSD. I'm sure you've submitted your proposal to give opportunity to students who may not have done science to be able to do engineering. And some of you are saying, are you crazy? Are you bringing America here? I'll tell you this. There's a story of Kojo Mensah who had a dream. In the dream, God was talking to Kojo, and he said, Kojo, you're going to be the best engineer the world has ever known. And he said, God, you don't know me. And God said, I created you. I know you, Kojo. And said, God, you know, I'm growing up in a country called Ghana. And I'm doing visual arts. In Ghana, visual arts students are not allowed to do engineering. So God, that's why I say you don't know me. But what Kojo Mensah didn't know was that God knew he was going to get an opportunity to go to America. And when you go to America, in respect of visualize, he was going to be an engineer. And probably a great engineer because he can visualize and he can draw. He's innovative. Last year, 83,000 students graduated with visual arts certification from our high schools. 
and none of them can be an engineer if they stay in Ghana. So if the greatest minds that can visualize and can draw you, can draw bridges, cannot be engineers, who are engineers? That is a question that we all need to respond to as a nation, and that is why the ministry has started an initiative for selected universities to apply for some grant to look at how they can, on a small scale, bring in students who did visual arts. Give them pre-engineering program where they will have to master the fixes and chemistry. And whatever pre-engineering requirement that you want, and give them the chance to prove themselves to you that they too can become engineers in Ghana and don't have to travel abroad. KNUST, as you reflect about the past and move on into the future, should be looking at innovative ways of bringing about transformation in Ghana. But I want to tell you one thing, we cannot continue to neglect the community that gave us this space. I paid tribute to the Asantina at the time who gave this land out. But I know there was a community called Yediase and others who live on this land. Can U.S. issue measure its success by how many people from Ayedriase have graduated from here? <laughs> we cannot continue to take away land from communities and forget about them. When we were here, the young men and women, uh, young men especially from Ayedriase, used to come and wash our dishes, and we call them our washing tents. And you know, as we allowed them to come to our house and watch this, they were not going to school. And sometimes you wonder why crime rate went up on this campus. These young men, at a certain age, could not come back and watch. But they knew all the nooks and crannies of the house, and they would come back. And that time, they would not come back smiling. They would come back, and your items may be stolen. This university should start, if they haven't, to progressively tackle the issue of involving the community who are in close proximity to here, to this part of town. Don't just bring them in during vacation, but make sure they are part and fabric, they are fabric of the university. If you have a neighborhood academic initiative that brought these students to this campus on Saturdays, to learn science, to help become proficient in reading and writing. What you are doing for them will not be the, just the academic exercise, but you are changing their mindset. When they sit in your classrooms, they begin to envisage themselves and envision themselves coming here one day as students. And that will make a huge impact. Students from Aizga Zongo should find space here for them to begin to see that they too, one day, or graduate from here. Ayedriasi students should not just pass through the campus, but they should sit in your classrooms and begin to envision themselves becoming students of KNUSD. The number of graduates from Ayedriasi to me will be a lasting legacy to this institution. It is not too late to right the past wrongs and disenfranchise them and not even worry about it. And this is a charge to all universities across the country. We have to begin to establish neighborhood academic initiatives and use this center of excellence to benefit the community. Whose lands? Lands that they could, even though the land belongs to Tunfo, they had the beneficiary interest and could have used it for farming, but they can't use it now. Their farming should be done in our letter halls, and they should come in. And I am glad to hear that uh, university primary is now integrated. When we were here, junior staff children were going to Uriya, so, and senior staff was at the university primary. I'm glad I hear the era, that era is over. If it was not over, it should be over. We can't discriminate against our own people. It so seeds of disenfranchisement and hate 
because by virtue of where they come from, certain opportunities are not available to them. And that's why I'm so excited about the initiative of the president to make sure we recruit students from across the length and breadth of this country to ensure that every student has opportunity for secondary education. When they all get the opportunity, they are not angry when they see your land cruiser because they know they too could have that opportunity. But if they don't get the opportunity, they don't get the opportunity, they look at you, successful man or woman, and they hate you with vengeance because they didn't get the opportunity. So Free Senior High School is a stabilizer of the nation, opportunity for all. When we begin to venture into gifted and talented education to look for those with gifts across the country to come into special schools set up by the government, that will be another watershed moment for this country because we have prioritized the gifts and talents of our youth. You know our anthem I went to America to see that is the Negro National Anthem. The anthem of Ken UST is the Negro National Anthem, adopted, and I'm sure you know our visionary president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, came from America. And I'm, I'm not sure who actually asked that it should be adopted. But the words are insightful. Go to the last answer when it talks about God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us this far on the way, Thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee, lest our hearts drunk with wine of the word forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. This is the church of KNUST. It was true when the university was founded and it is true today. So as we sing this anthem, let us be able to understand that we have a church to keep. Last Saturday, I was speaking at a graduation ceremony of the Ghana Institute of Chartered Accountants, and I told the graduates to be mindful of the fact that they owe it to themselves and to posterity to take interest in the education of children. All of us pass by schools all the time. Out of your busy schedule, would, could you one day stop in front of the school and go there and talk to the children and let them to begin to understand that they can become like you or even better than you? We need an army of volunteers, people committed to the transformation of this country, who will begin to see their role in the transformation agenda, and not those who lament and lambast we, the politicians, and tell us we have done some, something terrible. You have a role. It's not just us. It's all of us coming together. Universities coming together. Professors coming together, contributing ideas, bringing about innovation, and ensuring that the age-old problems of this nation will be looked at with a new set of eyes. And not only are we going to look at the problems, but we are going to propose ideas that will bring about transformation. KNUST, you have a critical role to play in the transformation of our motherland. These are charged to you and every step of the way the president, as he has already done, will support you. Nana Chancellor, it's indeed an honor to be in the same room with you and to sit here with you for this long. We really, we do not get the opportunity, so I really count myself lucky to be about two seats away from you. <laughs> My mom recently passed away. Um, the last time Nana came to meet me, I went home and told my mom, I've met with Asantehne. Then she started crying. Who am I to give birth to a son who will meet Asantehne? <laughs> so needless to say, needless to say, I believe my mom died uh, a very proud mom because I told her 
that I met Otufu Asante. <laughs> so, Nana, we are grateful for your leadership and for the work you do, not just for KNUST, but for Ghana. Your networks around the world have been used for the benefit of Ghana. Coming to the World Bank, when we almost lost the recent World Bank loan for the country, it is your intervention that brought it back. We pay tribute to you for your work through the O2 for Education Foundation, giving scholarship to needy students. We are very grateful for your leadership. We we'll support you as a government, as you lead us in various fields, bringing stability to us and to Ghana. Nana, we are grateful. <laughs> to the Council of the University, we are grateful for your leadership, especially the chairman who has been reappointed and sworn in, Nana Penton. You bring many years of diplomacy to your job, and we couldn't have found a qualified person, no qualified person other than you, to be at the helm of affairs, leading this institution. <laughs> to the vice chancellor, who I was scared to speak after she speaks, <laughs> eloquent, talented, gifted <laughs> vice chancellor leading the way at KNUSD and to the professors who I call my fellow teachers. <laughs> you are the senior teachers. <laughs> and we are the junior teachers. I call myself the teacher in chief of the Republic of Ghana. <laughs> so we are together in this. I know recently your research allowance was increased from 1,500 cities. $2,600. And I know some of you say, give us more. We are grateful for your service. Without you, this university will not make these great strides that it is making. To, to our staff, our junior staff, we are very grateful to you. I remember when I was the assistant secretary here, one day an idea occurred to me. I was going from the administration block all the way to report, and I saw how the lawns had been kept so beautifully. So I went and told the president of SR and said, let us write to the staff of the parks and gardens to thank them for the beautiful work that they do. And I think today is the same. They are doing a wonderful job here keeping the gardens clean. <laughs> to your maintenance staff, when you look at this building, and how it has been maintained. We ought to commend them for the work that they do at this institution. Every person here is so important. And it is all of you that come together to make this institution what it is today. So on this occasion of the 70th anniversary, I want to congratulate all of you for the great work you are doing. Continue to work hard. Continue to make KNUSD proud. We have to be the best in the world. And I have no doubt in my mind that KNUSD is going to be the best in the world. We have what it takes to become the best in the world. Let's get out of the African mediocrity tra trap. We are not talking about Africa, we are talking about the world. And I believe you can, under the leadership of the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, and the Council, we can create an institution that will be the best in the world. God bless you and God bless our home. <laughs>